If you liked the 2016 Ghostbusters movie as much as I did, oh man, is this movie for you. Say goodbye to gender norms because Barbie has arrived to subvert expectations and bring an end to conformity by making sure we're behaving like we're told by brilliant filmmakers who know better than us average folk. Without a doubt, the most important film ever made, Barbie has released on the same weekend as Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. The box office numbers tell the tale. People are far more concerned with the important topics, like Barbie talking about the impossibility of being a woman, over trivial matters like the existential crisis brought on by the invention of atomic weapons. Um, I like that the, like, everyone got recognition, like, women, it just, it was, Greta Gerwig speaks everything we want her to, like, what all women want to say, but also it's just cute that, like, Ken got his moment. Some sad people, like Pierce Morgan, would go so far as to call the film an assault on all men, and perhaps even claim that it's socially engineering misandry. But only fools would think that. If I wasn't convinced about watching Barbie, but I saw that someone had called the movie an assault on not just Ken, but all men, I would be buying a ticket so fast. It's really sad that anyone would think this is a misandrist film disguised as feminism. Actually, it's gross that anyone would think that. Taking a giant poo on men isn't the goal of the movie. It's just what it does the entire time. Little Mermaid and the new Peter Pan film squashed racism, and with the Marvels delayed, Barbie has picked up the slack to stop 1920s patriarchal stereotypes once and for all. Black Lives Matter! Have fun paying for all of this! Have fun this! The movie is about feminism, but not really, because feminism is about equality. I think some people hear the word feminism means that doesn't mean men, and I'm like, well, Yeah, no, it anyone, does mean men. Anyone who believes men and women should be equal. It's just, feminist. That's, so. it's, it's, it's. that's why I got all my friends to go see it with me. Because the marketing department made sure to tell us this wasn't just for girls or for feminists. This was a movie for everyone like the Super Mario Brothers movie was. I'll give you three reasons. One, she's a female. Two, she's not a boy. And three, and most importantly, she's a girl! And we decided to play a drinking game. Every time we heard the word patriarchy, we took a shot of vodka. One of my friends passed out and had to be rushed to the ICU just 30 minutes into the movie. But that's okay, because it was in honor of Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> what a deep, meaningful, and provocative piece of cinema we ended up seeing. Barbie is brimming with undertones and subtlety, begging to break out. But the brilliant director Greta Gerwig keeps everything locked down. She turns a simple toy line into an intellectual extravaganza that's pure sustenance for the mind. The film depicts the real world as a man's world, but is never overt, let alone mentions it. The word patriarchy is wisely uttered only a dozen times, keeping its nuanced themes as something you pick up on only by the end of the movie, when you throw your hand in the air and praise our feminist leader Greta for her genius and remain thankful she wasn't ham-fisted in her delivery. She's an Oppenheimer herself and is amazing with words. It sparked the decision to make Ken so obsessed and enamored by horses. You wouldn't necessarily know who's in charge. Like, the, maybe the horses are running more than you think because there's an awful lot of, like, horses in statues and horses in paintings. The CEO of Mattel, and we'll forgive him for being a man, this time, had this to say about the film. When everybody read the script here for the first time, I'm sure there were things that were like, wow, that sort of pushes things a little bit. But we all decided there were going to be moments where it might feel a little scary, but we're going to be rewarded for that. Being safe in this world doesn't work. We want it to be bold. Barbie is bold. She's done incredible things. She's a trailblazer. And that's what we did. And thankfully, they followed suit making sure to take the bold and daring strategy of doing the same feminist shtick half the films of the past eight years have done. We, the audience, have been rewarded. The CEO even made sure to let everyone know the intention of the movie isn't to sell more toys. And I definitely believe him, because I've never known a company to have the intention of making a profit and earning more money. Much like any endearing character, modern writing has to deconstruct and break down our hero. Enter Barbie. Um. Because the, when, we were, when we were making it, the whole... Barbie is like an icon. The setting of the movie has two worlds. Barbie Land and the real world. Barbie Land is a feminist utopia, brimming with women occupying every aspect of life from president to Supreme Court judges and Nobel Prize winners. All of the men are simply Kens, and they exist to simp after the Barbies. No fuckboys allowed. 
Oh, and there's Alan, who's the pushover guy who does whatever anyone says. Gotta have one of those. The plot is really clever here, because it's exactly like the real world, only the opposite. Because evil men rule the real world. Even though we have women in position of power, including the Vice President of the United States, Supreme Court Justices, but that's besides the point. Feminists need to stick together and continue pretending like it's 1928 so we have something to fight, namely the patriarchy. There's a lot of talk in the movie about the patriarchy. That mm -hmm. word is used a lot. In the film, uh, the Supreme Court is all women. <laughs> There's a woman president. Yeah. Every woman in Barbie land is perfect, and every guy in the real world is awful, just like the real world you, the viewer, inhabit. My son was sitting next to me when I was listening to that video at first, and he heard the guy say, in Barbie land, men are what's wrong with the world. <laughs> and he said, Did someone needs to tell him it's like that everywhere. <laughs> He's eight. I'm raising him so well. Stereotypical Barbie, played by Margot Robbie, has her perfect world interrupted when she starts to realize she's developing cellulite. Ick. So the plot sends her into the real world for attempts at character development. And who tags along? Silly Ken. In the real world, Barbie discovers that it's the upside down world for her. The real world is inhabited by nothing but disgusting men. Run by disgusting men and Ken is seduced by the literal patriarchy. He sees toxic masculinity everywhere and succumbs to its power. Ew! If you think this is on the nose, you're wrong. It's actually so close to your face it penetrates your eyes and grafts to your brainstem. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie gets the help of nice Hispanic lady who actually ends up being the person she was sent to find in the first place. Oh, and her Gen Z avatar of a daughter hates Barbie. Because Barbie is perfect and unfairly makes Gen Z girl feel like she actually has to have personal accountability and take responsibility for herself in order to achieve anything in life. Gross. Oh, and capitalism something something evil. Yuck. Buzzwords. Yeah. Barbie returns to Barbie land to discover Ken has shown everyone the power of the patriarchy. And all the other Barbies have decided it's actually pretty awesome. But Barbies are super strong and independent, so even though they made that choice, they clearly had to have been hypnotized because there's no way someone would autonomously choose to live like that. That's red pill alt-right pipeline stuff. The only way to be independent and autonomous is to make sure everyone's choosing the choices the non-hypnotized Barbies want you to. Even though once Ken turned Barbie land into a patriarchy, people were learning new skills, building new things, and generally moving their society forward, that's definitely bad. Seeing women be happy angers the upset Barbies, and they need a plan to fix that. So Real World Lady gives a five minute speech about the difficulty of being a woman, which is of course mostly the fault of men. Then someone calls Barbie a white savior for some fucking reason because we need to hit all the checkboxes, but whatever. And they decide giving that speech is the way to unhypnotize the women who chose the patriarchal structure. Aha! I literally can't even. The Barbies use the unhypnotized women to seduce the simpleton Kens and manipulate them into fighting each other because men are simple, idiotic creatures without any nuance to their brains at all. Godfather. Thing. Stuff. Beer. <laughs> Silly boys. It's totally just funny instead of completely fucked up that there's no repercussions for being this manipulative. Actions without consequence for the Barbie characters is key to this movie and it's amazing. Michael Sarah's effeminate character even gets his fantasy fulfilled when he beats up a bunch of chads. It's beautiful. The best part about Barbie is that its ending hand waves away any accusations of misandry because it kind of sort of decides to say it's wrong for all Barbies to be in control. Even though it just spent the last 20 plus minutes pushing the audience to root for the Barbies to get all of their positions of power back. This is perfect because then when any raunchy little misogynists call the movie for what it is, you can just tell them the ending was kinda sorta about equality after all. Take that, critical thinkers. This movie is nuanced with deep messaging, unless you don't like it. Then you're just overthinking a little girl's kids movie. The one thing that really made me mad though is that Ryan Gosling is the best part of the movie. It kinda sorta stinks that a man is the best part of a movie about feminism. Yeah, the irony is kinda killing me, but hey, at least he's super stinking cute. <laughs> <laughs> when men talk about women being attractive, it's so freaking disgusting. But it's totally cool when the ladies talk about how hot Ken is, 
being a walking, talking, contradicting hypocrite is so fun. Ken becomes the villain in the movie, and I heard someone call it the John Walker effect. When the writers project all the things they personally view as evil onto the antagonist, and boosting those traits to cartoon level villainy to make the audience root against them. But it unintentionally creates a far more entertaining, believable, and sympathetic character than the vanilla hero of the story. Yeah, that might have happened here, but Ken is still a guy. <laughs> <laughs> the script for this movie is absolutely incredible, making sure to gloss over any explanations about how anything works because it simply doesn't matter. My favorite part of the film is when they attempt to explain how the connection between the real world and Barbie Land works. And instead of clarifying, the characters just give up because who gives a shit, right? The fact that the writers know it's lazy bullshit actually makes it super clever and really good. I just love that this movie breaks down gender roles too, completely smashing that glass ceiling society has placed us under. Gender roles are a complete social construct, and yeah, 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 I know that the movie has hilariously reinforced them by virtue of the fact that the audience on opening weekend was 73% female, but we can just keep that a secret between you and me. All world problems are solved now thanks to Barbie, at least in America. Oppenheimer might be talking about silly things like the existential dread of the possible end of humanity thanks to humans developing the means of our own destruction, but gosh darn it, Barbie developed cellulite. The real tragedy of the 21st century. Ladies, if you could just support the WNBA the way you support a fat chick that's proud of her body and is no longer a threat to you. Oh my God, you're a goddess. You're gorgeous. You look great in that bikini. I would kill myself if I looked like that. Keep eating, keep eating. But don't worry, the movie is also very body positive. The marketing department deserves every penny they earned with this one, because they made sure to hide the overt toxic feminism oozing out of this movie from everyone. Did I say toxic? I meant perfect. Mom always said, indoctrination never starts with something obvious, it gets over later. <laughs> <laughs> and remember everyone, when the movie is over and people are still shouting, she's Barbie and he's just Ken, it's not misandrist at all, because you can still tell people that the ending kinda sorta said something about equality. Even though no one will remember that, and just keep shouting the slogan and taglines, you can use that as a safety net. So all good whenever an argument is brought up. There's absolutely nothing in this movie whatsoever that felt like the writer and director absolutely hated Barbie growing up, and was inserting herself into nearly every role and projecting that as a universal experience. No way! Greta forever! Let her direct the next Avengers movie. Have her remake The Godfather. I think it's very evident in her work that she can, you know, that she's very, very intelligent. You can feel that in how her scripts and stories and characters are constructed and how they kind of come at you and it still feels real. It doesn't feel heady, but you can tell there's a lot of thought behind it. Like, the, maybe the horses are running more than you think because there's an awful lot of like horses and statues and horses and paintings and you ride horses. Like, so I liked that there was just this confusion that he just loved horses and and he thought, maybe they're really running it all. And then on top of that, it's constructed in a well-made film. We laughed, we, we almost cried. cried. Yeah, yeah, I cried a little bit. Like, I, cried I was like, twice. is my makeup okay? Because like, honestly, I'm a wreck after that, like emotional. I thought Little Mermaid was going to sweep the Academy Awards, but man, oh man, does it have competition. I keep hearing Oppenheimer was brilliant or whatever, but we know best actor is going to Ryan Gosling. Well, actually, maybe Margot Robbie will win Best Actor, because gender roles are dead. I can't wait to go back and watch this a dozen more times. Long live the Barbie movie. GG's misogynists. I'm gonna dismantle the patriarchy from the inside out.